It's Nolan. It's a process, gotta find the chemistry to mix it Gotta fight the odds to turn it to a statistic yeah. Gotta fight your homies when they losing their ambition right. Gotta fight a case when you ain't trying to go to prison It's a process, I've been on my grind yeah. 10,000 plus hours, don't never talk to me about time Don't, do don't tell me to be patient, homie, I've been self-reliant do Doing favors for vultures and it's been weighing on my mind Still I rise, it's a process, sleeping on Bobby couch My pops see the vision, but still he might just kick me out See what I'm really about, Damn. my people starting families Feel like I'm about to be hungry for life chasing a Grammy but understand me, it's a process yeah. Niggas got their own shit to deal with yeah. My songs only save them when I'm gone I hate it when I'm home yeah. I feel so unproductive when I'm asleep It's somebody up the street that's going harder than me But it's a process yeah. Stuck in survival mode Run for that pot of gold My phone is on silent mode Scrolling on Twitter, I see the tides changing I feel like baby boomers when they on online banking Ben Franklin in my account Made it about the drought Actions finally lining up with the words out my mouth yeah. Representing the South Struggling, trying to put it on the map I ain't talking about the Let's bring it back to the rap I do it all for my city Good, bad, and different I'm all for my city Even when I hate it I'm involved with my city Started from the bottom I evolved with my city Yeah, I do it all for my city Good, bad, and different I'm all for my city Even when I hate it I'm involved with my city Started from the bottom I evolved with my city Bringing all my dogs with me Yeah What's going on, beautiful people? It's the Kid J. Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. All right. In this particular show, we're going to be talking about Rick Ross going at 50 Cent. Of course, this is an ongoing beef that they've had for years, many years, over a decade at this point now. These two men have been very storied in their careers. Both of them have been accused of possibly, uh, you know, being aligned with with the folks, <laughs> as we'll say. Both of these men have been very successful, have amassed riches in great quantities over their careers as well. But all things considered, these niggas don't like each other no type of way, never will. And it just seems to be something that you can guarantee when you wake up in the morning, such as one day people will die and everyone needs to pay taxes. Just clean cut is that. We're going to be getting into... uh. Ross questioning 50 Cent's loyalty to Dr. Dre, as we saw in the um, Drake-Kendrick Lamar battle. 50 Cent did pretty much kind of side with Drake. He linked up with Drake multiple times. Um, Drake got his blessing to get that uh, G-Unit spinner chain. It, it wasn't something that 50 gave him, but Drake did go out and get a replica made. Um, after the battle had subsided, you know what I'm saying? And Drake's been putting out music. We also saw that 50 went out to Toronto to do a show. And while he was out there in Toronto, he once again linked up with Drake. They had a great time. And 50 Cent has actually come out since then and said that him and Drake will be or could be, let's just leave it there, collaborating in the future on some sort of TV show, right? Because we do know 50 Cent produces power the entire bmf saga he's got a lot of other projects on other channels not just on stars <clears throat> drake has also put out a number of um tv shows and things in film over the years so of course he's experienced in that arena as well so perhaps they'll work on some sort of television project that's you know ongoing we'll see if that ever comes to fruition but that's the relationship that they seem to have at this current point Ross said, what the fuck is up? Like, you was brought in by Dre. Dre brought in Kendrick. You worked with Kendrick early. This is not something that Ross said, but I, I picked up on that because when Kendrick was getting his buzz going and stuff like that and the, the spotlight was on him, he then in turn worked with Kendrick Lamar on a collab and I feel like a lot of the attention that was produced on that collab came from people that wanted to see what a 50 Cent and Kendrick Lamar song would sound like. But he was kind of siphoning some of his buzz and some of his interest at that time. So I think it's very interesting because, you know, 50, 
for the last decade or so has not been relevant for his music, right? His old albums, those first two albums, hey, the mixtapes and shit, I still listen to that shit, right? Some of the other mixtapes and shit that he's put out in the last decade, I still listen to, but it's not the popular music. It's not the stuff that people bring up. It's not the stuff that mainstream fans listen to. He ain't been relevant for music for a very long time. The most relevant song that he's had in this period has been the power theme that everybody was very loyal to and told Trey Songz to get the fuck out the gate about. You know what I'm saying? Which I knew was a dope record before it became the power theme. I remember when he had just put it out as a single. Anyway, Ross said, what the fuck? Shit looking funny over there. Why you ain't, why you ain't side with your squad? You from the, what? These niggas is from, from West Coast. These niggas from Continent. Why you ain't ride with Dre and Kendrick? Why you with the white boy, as he called him? The Canadian. 50's got some things to say as well. He went on Million Dollars Worth of Game and um, issued a brief response, not too much. We're also going to be addressing uh, Meek Mill going at WAC 100. They've had an ongoing issue for the better part of about eight, nine years, stemming back to um, Meek and the game having issues years ago. Since then, that's been dissipated. They've pieced it up. But for whatever reason, Meek and WAC 100 can't seem to get their footing together. So Meek decided to come out and question WAC's um, authenticity as it pertains to street politics. Now, when I talk about these things, I'm very selective in how I use my words, because when it comes to street business, I don't be wanting to get involved with none of that shit. We're, I'll talk about it. I'll say it in my own coded language. I'll let the niggas that want to talk about it do the talking so that those niggas that want to do the talking can also reap the benefits, the rewards or the consequences for their words and or actions. But a nigga like me, y'all see, man, <laughs> I like to stay out the way, man. I am a father. I am soon to be a husband. I want to be a family man. All right. Now, Meek Mill, on the other hand, is questioning his street authenticity. And he's got some people from around uh, Wax Way that have been calling him out to which he co-signed. All right. We're going to address both of those incidents in this one video because Lord knows I'm not going to do separate ones about this shit. So let's get into the mix. All right. First off, let's get into Rick Ross and what he had to say about Fitty. And then we'll take it from there, shall we? Cool. We won't want you to lose like he just bought the Holyfield Mansion. Damn. He bought a jet. Damn. Oh, no. Fourth annual car show. Damn. <laughs> I just seen a clip of the Wallow show where he was interviewing 50 Cent. And the other little dude asked him a question, um, small talk. But ultimately, the question that should have been asked was, you jumped out there during the beef, the West Coast versus the Canadian. And I thought Dr. Dre put you on. I thought Dr. Dre was the set. I thought you was loyal to Dr. Dre. You mean you went with the Canadian over Dr. Dre? Who, who you, you say changed your life? I ain't know. I thought loyalty. I th but you did shut the fuck up once the Canadian took the L. You got totally quiet. You did. So. Since these niggas count my pockets, I'm going to let them know my next move. My next move finna be Thriller in Manila 3. Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield 3. Once Tyson knock out Jake Paul, I'm going to get Tyson and Holyfield to fight in my front yard. I'm going to put a ring right there. And it's going to go down in my front yard. I want the judges to be Snoop Dogg, Kevin Hart, academics. You hear me? The ring going to be right there at the promised land. Thriller in Manila, the biggest. All right, I was I was I was rolling with the nigga till he, did, till he talked about the boxing shit. Now, I ain't gonna lie, that shit he said at the end definitely reminded me of some like Mandinka fighter shit. You know what I'm saying? 
nigga, do you 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 do remember that you bought this property, this full estate from Evander Holyfield? You think this nigga finna come grovel and fight Mike Tyson in your front yard on the property he used to own for your enjoyment and amusement? With a fucking cast of judges, including that one guy. Uh, this this why this why it's good to be Switzerland and this motherfucker. I pick no sides. I only reside with where the money resides, or where the truth presides. You know what I'm saying? Those two things, <laughs> um, where my alliance lies. Because these niggas. Got to be sleep deprived. You niggas crazy. Okay. Now, with Ross talking about 50 Cent's recent appearance on Million Dollars Worth of Game with Gilly and Wallow. You see, he didn't even want to name them because he don't like Gilly neither. Uh, Ross and Gilly went back and forth about a year ago or so. And them niggas was having their little issue bullshit. But they asked him about Ross and uh, basically, he said the only reason why Ross continues to talk about me is because nothing else he has going on in life thrives unless he speaks on my name. And that's when he gets covered by the blogs. We'll go ahead and pull up 50 speaking on that. Seen a Ross take a shot at you a couple huh? weeks ago about a girl that you're not even with no more. Oh, and then, what is it with you and Ross that's just Listen, been going on for so long? I spent a see right? Nothing else works for him outside of mentioning me. When things get bad, you mention me, it gets covered further. You see TMZ is a 50 cent said this is gonna be bad for Irv Gotti's career. I get covered across the board. They get covered on the hip hop blogs. It is what it is. And you watch because I have nothing else to say. You just see it happen periodically yeah. as it goes. Yeah. You know, yeah. you see that big white elephant? Yeah. That property he lives at? It costs more than the nightclubs. He's in the nightclubs. Yeah. We know what they can give you. He then goes on to call Rick Ross broke and says, why are you trying to save money? You got all that grass. Why are you cutting your own grass? What are you trying to save bread? To which... That now enters a conversation that I'm not qualified to have because, nigga, <laughs> hey, man, I don't give a fuck, man. If I had that shit, man, I would, I would, I would be cool with, with paying a landscaper. I would be cool with cutting my own shit, man, if I had it. Those are the executive decisions I would have to make. Ain't nobody going to clown me into which one I'm going to make, god damn it. But I'm sure it takes a long-ass time to cut that fucking grass. We're going to be honest about that part. All right? Now, well, I will say regarding 50 Cent and his assessment of Rick Ross, I have to say that he ain't lying, okay? 50 Cent, when he speaks, he does reach a very massive crowd of people, right? A lot of people love him, a lot of people hate him, and he does get covered by a lot of publications, whether he's trolling somebody, whether he says something about Ross, whether he says something about Diddy, whether he says something about whatever, right? We just saw that he he um, launched G Unit Studios in Shreveport. That got a lot of coverage when Hurricane Chris had an issue with the launch of the studios out there in Shreveport because they didn't have no artists that he deemed eligible to be on the lineup for that uh, festival shit that he did. It was out there when he said, "Nigga, you whack. That's why we ain't book you." It was covered by a wide variety of publications. Uh, when it comes to Rick Ross, we only hear from him a couple times a year. When he tries to do his car show at his house, when he's beefing with 50, and perhaps if he does a collaboration with Meek Mill, we might think about it for a couple seconds. But outside of that, we don't really check to see what's going on. Oh, one more thing. Uh, when Tia Kemp is slandering him, right? Those are about the four times a year and depending on how froggy Tia Kemp is feeling, you know what I'm saying? If she if she goes on a two week run, we might talk about that situation for two weeks as it pertains to Ross. Cause she's gonna clown you, she's gonna talk about you, your weight, she's gonna talk about the food that she liked to eat, how she was cooking you some conk and all that country ass shit. But outside of that, it does get a bit quiet 
when regarding Ross. Maybe that's by design. Maybe he wants to live a quiet life. But the amount of time that he runs his mouth, I don't think he wants all that quiet of a life. Seems that talking shit is his entertainment. But, hey, I think y'all are birds of a feather in that regard, as in you and 50 Cent. Okay? Let's keep the show rolling. We're not going to talk about none of this shit for too long. Again, we got Meek Mill calling out WAC 100. WAC 100 is one of those people in the hip-hop culture, in the space that is constantly speaking, constantly talking about people, constantly um, alleging that he knows information about intimate situations that happen in this game. And when I say intimate, I'm not talking about body to body. I'm talking about mostly street stuff. Whether somebody got robbed, this person got extorted, this person got beat up, all of these different things. WAC 100 claims to know the background details behind all of these different things. Whether or not he wants to put that information out, he certainly does not hesitate to go on a Clubhouse and speak on what he knows. All right. Meek Mill and him, they don't they don't see eye to eye. He says he's an informant. He says a lot of things about him, as a matter of fact. Um but let's get to the meat and potatoes of what it is Meek has to say about WAC 100. So he comes out on Twitter and says, you never been to a support the hood day. Nobody can verify where you came from. You talk a lot on Clubhouse. You're in a program for sure, for sure. And when he says a program, he means he's uh, compromised by the, by the police, basically. He says, you come online with fake extortion stories, speaking on um, unaliving a famous person. Now, I think some of that may be in regards to the untimely passing of Nipsey Hussle. Um, and there is some rumblings about, you know, how that happened, who was responsible for that. One of Wax's former associates, um, Big U. His name comes up quite a bit in, in regards to why Nipsey's no longer here. Again, that is some street politics stuff that I don't necessarily cover deeply on my channel, but there are some people that do. You could go dig into that on your own personal time. However, we will get into uh, this um, this gentleman who had a lot to say about whack because Meek Mill did reference and link the world to it. All right. So this particular post. Let me see what homie's name is so he can get all the credit for whatever he has to say. Um, Ayatollah Marv. OK. I don't know this gentleman. But he's had a few things to say about whack discrediting him in a number of ways. I will let him do the talking from here. All right. That's another lie. How do you, everybody got your phone number? How do you, how, how in the hell do you always know who called and yeah, they called me? You ain't been that important. You didn't get on death row till 2003 and there wasn't even death row then. And matter of fact, none of the homies say they even put you on. Damn. Ma James didn't, didn't bring you around. Oh, you got brought around by the police. Mm. So what, how did you come in to death row to the, from the beginning? And you brag about that you gave Suge Knight's uh, family $10,000. $10,000 ain't no money, nigga. You could have kept your mouth shut for $10,000. And I do believe that was uh, $10,000 towards a funeral of someone in the family. You can get $10,000 from victims of crime. And you bragging about 10, I gave it 10, did he ask you for it? You tried to get in his good grace. I done heard everything that you do. You didn't shot your shit. You are not, I'm in the park. I'm in Gonzalez Park. All the trips in Dubai and all the trips to Jamaica can't get you in the park. These young, these young piranhas will eat your ass up. You got no West Side Pass because the, the main man over there He's looking at your head. He already said he he didn't, he didn't already slammed you. He told me all about this lawsuit. He told me about your whole get out. So you are in a box right about now. Man, come on your own clubhouse and tell you to shut up. 
and you don't say nothing. You didn't put that on Pyro. So now, Mr. Pacoima, Mr. Mr. Dubai, you ain't in Pacoima. You don't come past Manchester. You sure are not going to come to El Segundo. I invite you. You've never been to none of the homies' funerals. You've never been to a hood day. How are you a Pyro and you've never been at no function? Matter of fact, the eighth is, is hood Ted in, in Fruit Town. Come through. I invite you to come through. John T, your boy, come on through. If you if you think you can come to Compton, come through. I dare you. I challenge you. This is the Yosemite Sam challenge. I'd like to see you come to Compton Hood Day, March the 4th, March the 8th, in Compton, California. We're in Gonzalez Park. You can go to Campanella Park. You can go to Enterprise Park. Shit. Just go to come to Tams and buy a hamburger. I and, of course, Tams is the, the local burger spot that we saw in Not Like Us. That's seen a boom in um, tourism and uh, economic growth since that video came out, just for anybody not paying attention all the way. That's where he's inviting them. Say, a bare minimum, come there. Bet you won't. Dare you. But I know you ain't. So onward and upward, Yosemite Sam, your time is up. Hey, Charlie, you got him, boy, on that one. You got him. I give you one for that. You ain't getting shit else. Because you talk to these nitwits, but you could talk, I did head to head. I'm going to tell you about that head to head you did with me, Charlie. But I appreciate you checking the CI. And a, a paid informant check the CI, confidential informant, that lies. I was there with Jimmy Hinchman, told you, you a damn lie. And you're gonna get you're gonna get it for that one. Yeah, you make it. All these lies are catching up to you. On Pyro. This is Diatola. I'm checking out to check in. See you, Ch Charlie. You're next. All right, that's Ayatollah Marv with his uh, assessment of WAC 100's character, his hood politics, his connections to the streets, all of those things, his connection to Compton. You know, I'm not at liberty to really repeat too much of what he said because that's too deep for me. But y'all heard him. He basically said he's an informant, said that he was brought into death row, which is, of course, Shook Knight's legendary label, said that the police brought him in i do believe that he worked as some form of security for death row but i don't know his connection to the police i can't speak to that but i'm sure there's some people out there hey if you have that information you can put it in the comments that's all good with me and again we only got to that conversation because meek mill initiated that conversation he linked to that conversation and apparently he still wants some level of smoke with WAC 100. Meek Mill, you're a very confusing guy. <clears throat> One minute you're talking about peace, love, prosperity, and wanting to be there for your kids and doing prison relief and all of these different things with Robert Kraft and all of these different people. The next minute you come out and talk about how you're rolling with them sticks in the hood and that you're running with nothing but goddamn bandits and shit like that. Which one is it? Okay. Okay. Because, God forbid, people people have turned you to a, a laughing stock and a joke. But I don't think nobody really wants to see anything physically happen to you, right? So, we understand, Meek, you probably weigh, you taller than me, but you probably weigh the same amount as me. So, keep it wrapped, keep it cool, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not, whatever it is that you may have been involved with in the past out in Philly, it's been, you know, documented that you used to sell, you know, let's just say ice cream in, in your city. And I'm sure that there's some things that you had to do in order to survive and successfully sell ice cream in your city. But that was a long time ago. Old habits do die hard, but so do thugs. Just chill do what you do, keep it music, keep it rap, keep it productive. And let's hope everybody continues to make it home to their families and feed those families 
for many days, months, and years to come. Let me know what y'all think of all this stuff down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. I will catch y'all on the next one. All right? Peace. King of my city in cul de sac. Come and I swing like soldier rag. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. I was ready for years and they doubted me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my I came back with some battery, stand for my honor, but you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.